Good morning to you all. Good morning to you. On this Palm Sunday morning, may I invite you to stand, please, so we could worship him who loves us and gave himself for us, using the words here in yellow that are on the screen for you. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Behold, your king comes to you, O Zion, meek and lowly, sitting upon an ass. Ride on in the course of truth and for the sake of justice. Your throne is the throne of God. It endures forever. And the scepter of your kingdom is a righteous scepter. You have loved righteousness and hated evil. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I wonder if we know what the word Hosanna actually means. Any of the youngsters here help me out? Anyone know what Hosanna means? Yes? What does it mean? You don't know. Well, I should think we better ask some of the adults then. Save us. What's this? Save us. It's, it's save now. <laughs> or rescue now. Make your love real to us. Well, as we stand, we're going to sing two songs of praise, asking God to save, to rescue us, to make his love known to us. And as we do that, there are some shakers here, so if the younger ones want to come and collect one, that would be great. And we'll sing two songs, one after the other. The first one is just called Hallelujah, Hosanna.
seated. And Jamie has got something to share with us. Excellent. Brilliant. I don't know if you ever waited for someone really important to arrive. Maybe you've been standing at the side of a road in a crowd full of people waiting, waiting for that person to arrive. A couple of years ago, uh, I went up to London for the, uh, for the Queen's Jubilee, and I was standing for hours in this huge, huge crowd of thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And it was so exciting. People so many important people uh, coming down, uh, down the mall, down the road, uh, and you could hear them coming, you could hear the noise. It's so exciting. Perhaps if you're waiting for someone exciting, maybe it's a bit of a long wait, a bit of a boring wait, but then suddenly uh, looking over the shoulders of everyone in front of you, you can just sense something's happening, something exciting is happening. You hear the noise of people shouting, hooray, hooray, they're coming. You see the smiles on everyone's faces as they catch a glimpse of this special, important person. Maybe you see people taking selfies, just wanting to get a photo with them. It's so exciting when someone important, like a king or a queen, or somebody comes to town comes past when you're in a big crowd of people. As we celebrate uh, Palm Sunday this morning, we think about that amazing day 2,000 years ago when King Jesus arrived in his capital city. And uh, uh, they didn't shout hooray, but they shouted Hosanna like we've heard. And uh, they, didn't, they didn't take selfies, but they did wave these amazing leaves, these amazing branches, which are, are pretty cool. Uh, and they... They wave these amazing branches. And, uh, and we're going to hear about that story now as we watch a video uh, that's going to tell us the story uh, of that wonderful day. The story of Easter. The triumphal entry. This is Jesus. hey Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. Jesus and his disciples stopped in the town. You're coming? And Jesus told two of his disciples to go on ahead of them. Eh, okay. He told them to go into a village and that they would see a young donkey that no one had ever ridden. Rock! He told them to untie it and bring it to him. <laughs> if anyone asks, what are you doing? He told them to just say, the Lord needs it and we'll return it soon. Yeah, okay, go ahead. So the disciples did what Jesus said and brought him the donkey. A long time ago, before Jesus was even born, God had said that the Savior, the King of Israel, would come to Israel in this way. And now Jesus was doing just as God had said. The news that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem swept through the city. Many heard about all the amazing things he had done, so they cut palm branches and ran to see him. Huh? The Pharisees and religious rulers realized that there was nothing they could do, for everyone was going to see Jesus. Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem, and the crowd spread their coats on the road ahead of him. His followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. The Pharisees were upset, hey, Jesus. and they told Jesus to stop the people from saying things like that. But Jesus said, if they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. So the people kept on singing, blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in highest heaven. 
the entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered, asking, Who is this? And the crowds replied, It's Jesus. And Jesus rode the donkey through the street of Jerusalem to the temple in a triumphal entry, just as God said he would many years before. What does Hosanna mean? What does it mean? Shout it out to me. Save now. Good. Well, thank you, Jamie, for that little thought. Um, but sadly, there were people, as we saw on that little film strip, that there were people who didn't like Jesus. And they had him put on a cross. That was their plan. But it was also God's plan two. Uh, mums and dads, I uh, hope you've all got some palm crosses. Yes, good. You should have one each for all your children. So everyone should have one. So I'd like you to uh, pick yours up and just hold it in front of you like this. And uh, we are going to uh, follow some words that are going to come on the screen. Your part is the yellow part, please, but let's look at the cross. On the first Palm Sunday, the crowds worshipped Jesus, but their understanding was limited. Lord Jesus Christ, today you come to us in peace, but often our minds are not fully open to you. In your mercy, Forgive us and help us. You come to us in humility to serve us, but often we prefer our own proud ways. In your mercy, forgive us and help us. You come to us to cleanse and restore, but we cling to our familiar sins. Forgive us and help us. You come to us in majesty, but we can be reluctant to have you reign over us. In your mercy, forgive us and help us. Lord, forgive our empty praise, fill our loveless hearts, come to us and make our lives your home forever. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, now the time has come for our younger ones to go to their groups. Uh, so, uh, please, if you've got a shaker, would you like to return that to the box and then make your way to uh, the, your appropriate places? Uh, and uh, as you go, well, when you've gone, we'll pray for you. Well, dear friends, what a joy to see so many youngsters. Uh, let's pray for them. Lord, we thank you for all the young ones who are here today. As they continue to think about you, may your Holy Spirit enliven their minds, move their hearts, so that there may be a growing desire in these young lives to know more of you and above all else to love you and to trust you. We pray for those who are now ready to lead those groups, that your wisdom would be upon them, 
that they may be examples of your goodness, your kindness, your love and your grace. Bless them, we pray, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And having prayed for them, as we come to our Bible readings now, may God's Holy Spirit help us to hear and to grow in our understanding. Each of our readings this morning will be followed by some silence, so we've got a little bit of an opportunity to hear what God may be wanting to say to us through our two readings. So, our first reading, please. First reading is taken from Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. The Triumphal Entry. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Tell him, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let, let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their coat cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David! Hosanna in the highest! Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Psalm 118, the first two verses, and then verse 19 to the end. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteousness, I will enter and give thanks to the Lord, for this is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it's marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine upon us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, today is Palm Sunday, and you've got your palms, and there's a real sense of celebration. It's the first day of Holy Week, leading up to uh, seven days before Easter Sunday itself. And of course, because it is seen as a, a day of celebration, it's seen as a day of victory, because it's also known as the triumphal entry. And I think we love the story, not just children, but we all love the story of Jesus riding on a donkey, which is the symbol of one coming in peace, entering the city of Jerusalem through the Golden Gate, the gate historically for the Jews through which the Messiah would come. And then greeted by a mass of waving branches, the symbol of welcome for a king, accompanied by the shouted hosannas which we now know means God save us now. Would you call this a parade? A parade is defined as a large number of people marching, walking, or riding, all moving in the same direction as part of a public celebration. Well, celebration being the key, it seems to fit the bill. Consider your own experience for a moment. I wonder if you've ever taken part in a parade. Slightly different than a procession because of that celebratory aspect. If you're from a military background or even a scouting background, then undoubtedly you have. On the other hand, perhaps you simply remember an Easter bonnet parade as a child. It was lovely to see in Ireland Effie in their Easter bonnets this morning as they were sitting over there and they've gone out. Perhaps you did that. Well, where I grew up in Neston uh, on the Wirral Peninsula, sorry, the, um, at the beginning of June was the traditional Ladies' Day parade. It would be a place for girls and women of varying ages to take part. Now, this is a newspaper photo. It's pretty poor, <laughs> but at least you know there's no AI involved. It, it was taken in the late 60s. Unfortunately, it's not, as I say, it's not very clear, but it is about my era <laughs> when I took part. I'm probably there somewhere. <laughs> Those who apl applied would parade through the village, cheered on by crowds, We'd walk into the church, have a little word there, parade a bit more, and end up at what they call now the Civic Hall for an afternoon tea. Well, it was great because you'd dress up in your party frocks. And for some reason, we'd brandish a pole, on top of which were flowers. I remember my father cutting up a broom handle <laughs> between me and my sister, painting it white and sticking a few croissants on the top because he grew them. Well, the event dates back to 1814, and it came to be known as Ladies' Club, and now it's called uh, Neston Female Society. 
And it remains an important tradition today, a celebration, a celebration, if you like, of femaleness. Well, back to Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is certainly significant <clears throat> because all gospel writers, all four gospel writers, record it. But it made me think, why does Jesus decide to go to Jerusalem during the feast of the Passover, which is arguably the most volatile and political of feasts? It celebrates, break, you see, <coughs> the exodus, the exodus of God's people centuries earlier when they left Egypt. It highlights God's triumph over that superpower of the day, Egypt. You see, the city would be packed. The Roman authorities, the new superpower, always anticipating trouble from extremists, would be out in force. But Jesus' triumphal entry was no random act. Jesus had been guarded, very guarded, about his identity up until this point. Because the political implications of such a declaration would have impacted on his intended ministry of healing, teaching, and proclaiming the gospel, the kingdom. So he intended, intended to identify himself as the son of man. But now, now Jesus' life journey is reaching its conclusion, its climax, its significant goal. Passover, historically, is the time for sacrifice, the sacrifice of an unblemished lamb. Perhaps you can see the connection there. Jesus, unblemished, Sinless, often called the Lamb of God. So Jesus is certainly making a statement about his kingship. Although he begins low-key, there is undoubtedly an underlying spirit of confrontation. Because there is going to be a clash of interests. Jesus is heading up a parade. His time had come. So often before he had said, my time has not yet come. But now the time has come for Jesus to claim his title Messiah. Therefore King, the Jews expectant King, the Messiah, in fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. In Zechariah chapter 9, we read, shout, Daughter of Jerusalem, see, your king comes to you righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. You know, undoubtedly, this overt claim would stir up confrontation because this parade is heralding a movement a movement of change, an alternative king. And in fact, while Jesus is entering the city from the east, Pilate, the governor of Judea, is marching into the city from the west. He was coming from Caesarea. Mounted on a stallion, the world's king rode, all the world's kings rode great stallions to denote power and with full military might. So Pilate is coming to Jerusalem precisely because of the Passover, because of any threat of trouble. His parade is a show of force, a show of power to remind the people of Jerusalem that Rome is in charge. So Jesus is coming from the east and Pilate is coming from the other direction. The emperor that Pilate serves is considered a god, remember? Until later in the first century, the emperors would demand to be addressed as god. 
and worshipped as a god. Pilate represents a Roman Caesar who calls himself God, but a secular power. It seems to me that it echoes through the world today if you think of some of the superpowers that exist and the worship that they demand. But it was a secular power. So therefore there were two parades, as I've said, on this first Palm Sunday. From the west came Pilate and his entourage, and from the east, from Bethany, Jesus the Messiah, riding on a donkey. True statesmanship. And I suppose the question for us still is which parade would you be cheering for? Which God do we choose to serve? Because in truth, Jesus' entry was more than just a parade, because a parade is generally intense, but short-lived. We cannot live our life at parade level for very long. We'd be burnt out. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem on that Farm Sunday, he knew precisely what was ahead of him. He knew that just days later, he would face the cross. So let's take a moment to backtrack a little. At the beginning of today's passage in Mark, Jesus is near the Mount of Olives at Bethany, located just east of Jerusalem. And he sends two of his disciples to a specific location for a specific task. Go into the village you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden, and tie it and bring it here. Well, just to clarify, a colt could be the young of either a horse or a donkey. But Jesus' instructions are clear, though. The donkey must be one that has never been ridden. It has to be unspoiled in any way, Hence the colt, the young donkey. For there is a rabbinical tradition that no one should ride or use the animal on which a king will ride. God's king would ride a donkey of humility and peace. Jesus also tells his disciples, if anyone asks why you are taking the colt, you are to say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. That's quite key. And will send it back here shortly. And that's what they do. Now, there can be no turning back. God's purposes have to be served. The disciples set Jesus on the colt's back and prepare him. And the people strew his way. It was custom when welcoming a king into the city for people to lay their cloaks onto the road, a kind of alternative red carpet, as well as brandishing festival branches, palm branches, and they would shout, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, quoting Psalm 118. Our other reading this morning, we heard part of it read by Tony earlier. So you see, hopes are riding high. The crowd gathers around Jesus, engulfs him, many anxious to see him because they've heard of the recent raising of Lazarus from the dead at Bethany. What promises he holds? What promise? And they cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna, which as we know, literally means save us now. Surely, surely he is the one to overthrow the Romans. Surely it is only a matter of time. The Pharisees that watched also knew their scripture. Jesus' actions are a threat, a deliberate claim to be king. 
But what kind of king? Jesus comes with the threat of newness, of transformation, and also dismissing some of what people value most. And so they conspire. They conspire against him. But those early cheers will turn to jeers before the week is out. Hosanna will turn to crucify the very same people will be crying out. We see people are incredibly fickle. And Jesus will be turned over to the Romans for trial and he will be found guilty of trying to overthrow the government and will be rejected by the people in exchange for the life of Barabbas, a known criminal. You see, Jesus will be killed for his claim to kingship. But you know, there's something very different about Mark's version of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, something unique. Throughout his gospel, Mark writes with pace. He's always a man of action, a writer of action. And he effectively writes in verse 11 that Jesus rides into Jerusalem, he enters the temple, he looks around at everything, not betraying any reaction right then. He does nothing, he says nothing, and then he leaves to return to Bethany because, Mark says, it is already late. Now, this could read like an anticlimax, but wasted expressions are not Mark's style. Could we surmise that Jesus' destination wasn't just the city in general? His destination was the temple. A specific visit to the temple for the sake of the temple itself. In this place where historically sacrifices were made, Jesus looks around, we're told, at everything at everything. Yes, he will return the next day in Mark's gospel to cleanse the temple area of wrongful use, but for now, he needs to consider all that this final intense week and his ultimate sacrifice will mean. He looks round at everything. And then the gospel tells us Jesus left the temple as it was already late. Late for what? Or late in what way? One could say it was late on so many levels. It was late and therefore low on visitors, late in time. It was late in Jesus' life journey, towards the end of his life. It was late to return to Bethany. Because there is another unique mention in Mark's account. He is the only writer to say that Jesus promised to return the cult to its owner. Only Mark speaks about Jesus returning the cult. Is this why he leaves the temple? So that he can keep his promise? be true to himself, keep his integrity, keep his word right to the end. Those who watched on that first Palm Sunday would make a choice. They would either serve the God of this world, serve might and power and pomp, or they would choose to serve the king of a very different kind of kingdom the kingdom of God. And you know, on Palm Sunday today, we still face a choice. Which procession will you choose? It's never too late to choose the right parade. It's never too late to turn around and follow Jesus. We've sung a lot of hosannas this morning. 
We've sung Hosanna, which means save us. But do we really mean it? Do we really mean that? What does it mean for us to welcome Jesus at the beginning of this Holy Week? What does it mean for you? Are you moved to lay down your cloak? Because you know, either you are with him or you are not. There really is no middle ground. I read this recently. For those who have the eyes to see and the ears to hear and a spirit to comprehend, Palm Sunday tells us that Jesus is a most unusual king, one whose sacrifice and suffering will bring salvation and conquer death. If we fail to see him for who he really is, the suffering son of God, the sacrificing saviour of the world, the Lord of all life and death, then Palm Sunday, this Palm Sunday really, really is just another parade. Amen. We're going to sing together, There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son.
we come to our creed this morning, let's make sure we think about the things that we are saying and committing ourselves to. Let us confess our faith in Christ. Christ died for us once and for all, the just for the unjust, to bring us to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. He has gone up on high and is at God's right hand, ruling over angels and powers of heaven. Amen. Please would you be seated for our prayers. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you now with so much to be thankful for that we're allowed to worship freely in church without fear of persecution. For our loved ones and friends, whether they be near or far, for our homes, for the community we live in, for peace in our country and the start of spring. Whilst there are times we may not recognise we are blessed, when you consider others, we are. Amen. Today is Palm Sunday, and next Sunday will be glorious Easter Day. We have all been given palm crosses. Let's put them up at home in a prominent place to remind us of the lead up to next Sunday and what it means to all believers. We think of the fulfillment of the prophecy given hundreds of years ago before in Zechariah, for telling that the King and Saviour would come mounted on a donkey just as Christ entered Jerusalem. The crowds flock to see Jesus and welcome him, shouting Hosanna. Lord, during this holy week, help us to turn our eyes to you. Take away the distractions around us and let us rejoice openly and thankfully celebrating you as a king. You've um, helped us to walk closely with you from the joyous procession of Palm Sunday to the sorrow of Good Friday and the ultimate triumph of Easter. Remind us of the profound love you have for us, a love that endures all trials and triumphs over all adversity. Strengthen our faith, faith and keep us faithful to you. Amen. Lord, in our first prayer, we gave thanks for the many things in our lives, yet we're aware today many troubles and conflicts are happening and impact millions. We bring before you the continued fighting in Ukraine, Gaza, Sudan, just to name a few, where it is not just the destruction of lives and homes that, are having, that they're having to deal with, but now there's the looming threat of famine. We pray for wisdom and guidance for those who are trying to bring peace and negotiate in these challenging times. God, we cry out for peace and for justice. We pray for an end to these wars and for ceasefires. We pray that those in power would act to stop this violence now. And we ask this in the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we think of our community here in Southborough. We know only too well there are those who are struggling with life, whether it's down to health, financial situations, stress or bereavement. We pray for any of us in contact with others that we will be a sympathetic listener and give us the right words of advice and comfort. And as a church, show us where and how we should be helping. Amen. We give thanks for our leaders in church, Nick, Sheila, Jim, Jamie, and especially during this busy Easter week, and for those who help with the children's work throughout the week those who read, pray, flowers, do the flowers, and numerous other jobs which help the church to run. Bless them all. Amen. And this morning, some members of our congregation are not able to join us because of ill health. And we also know others who are unwell. Let's just bring them before God now, asking for his blessing on their lives, a healing hand and peace of mind for them. We think of Sylvia, 
Jim and Shirley, Steve Lee, and this week, very prominently in the news, the Princess of Wales. And we also think of Jill. Let's just bring others known to us quietly before the Lord. Lord, we pray for your blessing on all those we have mentioned and placed before you. Show them and their families your love and comfort. Amen. And today we pray for CPAS, the Church Pastoral Aid Society, who is our church patron. CPAS have asked for continued prayer as they deliver training events to churches and leaders. They run falcon and adventure camps for children in the summer. Lord, bless those who deliver the training, who lead the camps, and who work behind the scenes to make all these events happen. Encourage them and bless them every day as they continue to spread your word. Lord, we ask all these prayers in your great and glorious name. Amen. The collect prayer for today. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We conclude our prayers saying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Time for notices. Thank you. Great morning, everyone. Um, just a couple of things to uh, let you know about, a couple of things uh, uh, you might want to be involved with. And uh, 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 maybe uh, there are th ways in which you want to respond to what you've been hearing this morning. Uh, let me just let you know a couple of things going on. The first is uh, straight, um, not straight after the service, maybe sort of 15, 20 minutes after the service. There'll be a short service of Holy Communion. It's in the annex. Uh, Jim will be leading that. And uh, we'll make sure you know uh, at the right moment to come through. Uh, it may also be that there are uh, things you'd like to pray through with someone else, uh, and prayer ministry, as always, will be available in that corner. Uh, this, this morning, it's going to be uh, Sheila and me uh, praying with you, if you'd like that. Uh, it may be that actually um, uh, you would like to help uh, serve in some way, and um, there's a couple of opportunities of things that uh, need doing. Uh, we have, uh, with our community larder, uh, a new slot has opened on a Wednesday uh, evening. Uh, it used to be on a Thursday morning, uh, so would you be able to help us pick up some goods from Tesco Tunbridge Wells on a Wednesday evening? Uh, Patrick, do you want to wave your hand uh, there, there, there he is. If, uh, if you are interested, please speak to Patrick for more information about uh, the larder. Uh, we're also going to be doing our holiday club uh, again at the end of the summer. We're, it was such a great time last year, and it was really only made possible because of the volunteers that we had. If you'd like to help with our holiday club this year, there's a planning meeting on the 15th of April, uh, which is uh, the first Monday back after holidays. It's at half seven in the annex. Do let Jamie know if you can make that. 
We've been thinking about uh, Holy Week. It is almost Easter. We've got all sorts of things going on. The first is maybe if you'd like uh, some reading material. Uh, Jamie has some books that uh, he got at an extraordinary discount, one pound for each of the books uh, uh, covering a different ages. Do go and see Jamie if you'd like one of those books for younger ones. And over Easter, we have... um, uh, services for each of the, the days of, of uh, uh, from Maundy Thursday. So at 8 o'clock on uh, Maundy Thursday, we have a very reflective Holy Communion service. All are welcome. Then on Good Friday in the morning, we have an all-age service. Uh, and then in the afternoon, a quieter, more reflective hour at the cross. And then on Easter Sunday, we celebrate the resurrection with our all-age communion service on Easter Sunday. At one of those, you need to be quite eagle-eyed and aware because the clocks will have changed on Easter Sunday. Don't get caught out. Uh, Do remember to change your clocks. And uh, over over Lent, we've been uh, setting various challenges. Can you guess what uh, this week's is? Why not ask someone to come to one of our Easter services? Uh, uh, There's something for everyone, and people are always much more willing uh, at seasonal times to come to church. It's a good time to be asking why not ask someone this week. Uh, There are things going on after Easter, and hot off the press, exciting. Friday the 19th of April, 6 till half 7, a games evening. Twiddling your thumbs, want to try a new game, uh, want to uh, just uh, have a bit of social time, come and join us. It's uh, going to be in the hall, uh, 6 till half 7, and uh, uh, do do come. I can't remember. No booking required, it says. Uh, Absolutely squeezing my eyes to see that on my iPad screen. Uh, If you can't make it along for six, please come along when you can. And uh, just the weekend before that, we're starting our new reflective communion service. Can he give any more notices? Well, yes, he can. Uh, and this one, this one might make you, uh, uh, might wake you up. Uh, This winter, I'm not saying anything about the temperature in church. But you may have noticed it's been a bit chillier in church than previous winters. Uh, And after lots of investigation and visits to the boiler room, uh, we have had had the bad news that our boilers are are really on their way out, if not, in fact, only just coping. And the recommendation is that we need to get a brand new, up-to-date industrial boiler installed to help us uh, heat church much more quickly, efficiently, and key reliably. Uh, We've had a quote for the work uh, and the bill, glad you're sitting down, will be about £13,000. Okay. Uh, And um, I know church church life can get very boring if you think all we do is talk about money, but uh, that is a significant amount of money and uh, it is a real need for this year. We're going to talk more about the APCM, about the budget. Uh, We're not quite covering all our costs for our day-to-day expenses. And we've got pots of money stashed away uh, for different projects like the reordering. Again, I'll tell you more at the APCM. Um, But we really do need to upgrade our heating system before the winter. So um, we've set up a boiler fund. I mean, every every church has one. Uh, We've set up a boiler fund. We'd love you, if you are willing and able, to consider contributing towards that. Uh, There's already some money in there from uh, uh, some generous uh, offers from people, but we've we've got a long way to go. So that's to let you know of the need. I'll be writing to you, communicating how we're going to do that over coming weeks. Um, But it would be nice, wouldn't it, uh, for next winter not to be sitting in church saying, where are the blankets? So uh, let's be praying about that. Thanks, Jim. Good. Well, here's an opportunity to give thanks to God for all the good things he gives us to us and offer ourselves to him. Words are going to appear on the screen. Would you like to stand, please? Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. We bring our service to a close, singing, King of the Ages, Almighty God.
peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God, who is almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.